Season 4, Episode 13, Never Again. So, this is the episode where Scully gets jiggy with it. <laughs> she gets tatted. So, alright. some ink. In the previous episode, Leonard Betts, Scully has uh, it revealed to her by Leonard that she has the big C. And uh, the way she deals with this is by going and getting the big C. She does get... No, I don't think she has C. sex with this guy. You sure? You think so? I don't think so. I kind of think she does. We'll talk about it. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, this is an interesting episode. Yeah. Because the, the, like, the tattoo stuff and the guy she goes and hangs out with, I don't really give a shit about any of that. That's fine and it's interesting. It, like, it's, it's entertaining and whatever. I don't really care. That's not the interesting stuff. The interesting stuff is what Scully's going through mm. and how she is talking to Mulder about it. Mm. And how she's dealing with it herself. Right? So, she's processing this. She's thinking, like... I don't have a life. Mm -hmm. Mulder has become my life. And we basically just do what he wants. And why don't I have a desk? <laughs> why don't I, you know, why is this Mulder's life that yeah. I'm living? Right? right? This is his X-Files. I don't even believe in this shit. Yeah. I think we've talked, we talked about in like either, I don't know if we did it in another episode or if we just talked about it off camera. I thought we mentioned it in another video, but like why Scully doesn't have a desk. <laughs> We talked and then about we it were the like, video. oh, they share or whatever, but they definitely don't. And uh, yeah, I like I like that she's having this um, a little bit of an identity crisis. crisis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that if you were in this line of work and didn't have those pretty regularly, mm -hmm. that something would be wrong with you because they are constantly being exposed to like insane and unbelievable things. That should make you question reality and more importantly like your place in reality and it's sad because like scully feels really underappreciated which she kind of is i mean we've talked about how Mulder constantly just tells her like what to do and then she has to ask him where he's going and they she kind of even addresses that here where she's you know oh, yeah. pushing back on him giving her orders and a few times brings up being like, you know, are you my boss, basically? Because they're not supposed to be that. They're supposed to be partners. And she's not feeling that, like, partnership and equal, you know, footing. But how does she meet this guy? By doing what Mulder told her to. She does. She does actually end up going on the assignment, you know, mostly because I think she's like, I literally don't have anything else to do. And I'll do my job. And uh, yeah, she finds the tattoo shop and she's all like impressed by the tattoo, which is a very like standard tattoo. Mm, back but, in the mid 90s. I don't know. Work Artwork was much different back then. Well, what really impresses her is the colors. Yeah. She thinks the colors are very vibrant. And of course they find out or she finds out that the ink is based off of like some grass yeah. that has, you know, that ends up having ergot in it and which is what, you know, causes hallucinations and causes all the hallucinations at the Salem witch trials, or at least that's what, you know, they say. And um, so, yeah. yeah, Scully's X-Files, the Scully's X-File that she runs across ends up turning into a medically uh, provable yes. X-File, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, totally. Um, but this guy, like, he gets this tattoo because he's going through a divorce and he's pissed off at his ex-wife. Yeah. And so he gets, like, this hot, like, tattoo babe that says never again to symbolize him, like, never letting women treat him poorly again. Um, so I think this is interesting because, of course, like, Scully's dad is in the Navy. Yeah. And growing up on a naval base in the 70s i would assume scully was when she was a kid uh either the early 80s or late 70s um you know 
sailors were known for getting tattoos and they mm -hmm. were known for getting tattoos like this mm -hmm. um th this is a very classic kind of like sailor tattoo it's of like the, the woman. traditional tattoo style like american traditional or so whatever it's called to her this would actually be somewhat like reminiscent of her childhood and what she's kind of familiar mm. familiarized herself with when it comes to tattooing um and because those tattoos would typically be like older and done I like you know when they're like you know at port in some random place and and they're older and and they're done on the fly and they're old and uh shoddy to her this would be like a, a more pretty version of mm -hmm. what she would be used to mm -hmm. so i i don't know because they made it those kinds of tattoos i was like yeah because scully's raised on a naval base i think that makes perfect sense um it's funny because like nowadays um i mean you definitely still get a little bit of that like tattoos being you know part of a subculture type of thing but i feel like so many more people have tattoos in like everyday professions and there's such oh a God. push for like normalizing tattoos but definitely like in the 90s and stuff it would have still been viewed as a very rebellious and like alternative thing to do she gets a tramp stamp she does so she gets an ouroboros um which i don't remember like the metaphysical meaning but it's, you know, the snake eating itself, um, which is highly symbolic. And uh, it kind of sucks that she, I mean, she doesn't have any, enough of the ink in her blood uh, to cause hallucinations. But it would have been interesting to see, even though we, we sort of already got the paranoid Scully episode. But I, I don't know, I wonder if anything would be different for her here. Um, well, yeah, I and, mean, she has cancer and... Yeah. That would add, that would but, add to the paranoia big yeah, time. She doesn't have any She could have had some like body horror dreams yeah. and stuff where she was like seeing cancer growth coming out of her body and seeing herself dying young and Oh yeah. Yeah, There's but so much to explore there. Instead, it's just this guy who's like the tattoo is just talking to him and telling him to kill women and uh cuz he's mad at his wife. Cuz he's mad at his wife and yeah, it's pretty pretty messed up i mean he goes downstairs and kills his like downstairs neighbor because he thinks that she's like talking to him like talking shit about him well yeah he's super insecure and i'm sure his wife left him because he you know was insecure and she said something about him and he has all like hurt feelings yeah and he just goes down and but, but, but that's actually a pretty scary scene because like she's not doing anything wrong she turns up her music because he's like banging on his paper thin floors <laughs> that you could like perfectly hear through yeah and she turns up her music to block him but he still comes down and literally kicks in her door yeah and it made me think because i was like i wonder if somebody could kick in our door <laughs> like i don't think so mm, but at the same I mean, time i'm would like you maybe we have double bolts yeah that's why i was like maybe hard. not because we have the double bolts but i mean you could but it'd just be it, it would require a harder kick yeah um, so of course, like another huge note here for this is that the voice of the tattoo is Jodie Foster. Yep. Uh, Jodie Foster played Clarice Starling and Dana Scully was based on Clarice Starling, uh, the character. So I thought that that was, that was some cool tie, tie-ins there that Jodie Foster made an appearance here, but it's only her voice. I would love to see Jodie Foster as a character in the future in here yeah, as like too. another FBI agent um, that Scully maybe like looks up to. That would be cool. I don't think that happens, but I'll, I don't know for sure. So I, I look forward to it. She worked on the show already right here, just doing a voice. So it doesn't seem too far of a stretch to think she might appear in another episode. Um, Mulder goes to a very spiritual place for him. He's forced to take a week off. <laughs> Graceland. Yeah. Um, that's very fitting because of the whole Elvis conspiracy. I feel like that's why he, he brings goes. him up a lot. Yeah, he does. He has like a fascination with Elvis. Yeah. Which definitely makes sense, because, like I said, because of the conspiracy. Do you think Mulder says the Elvis one because he tries to make that humorous of like, not even I believe this because it's so I, crazy? Or I is it like, 
Does he actually think Elvis is still alive? I can never tell, to be totally honest. I don't know. I feel like it could be either. I could totally see him believing it and having some, like, explanation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm 50-50 on it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm definitely 50-50. But it is funny that he goes there. And, yeah, the way this episode ends bums me out. Um, so, like, you know, Scully calls like the fbi agents come to the to the apartment of the guy that she's with and um you know she like gets the the case information from them and like looks up on the fbi databases or whatever and finds you know what's going on and she tries to help him she's like we need to go to the hospital like both of us need to go like we have a medical emergency and unfortunately his paranoia like gets the best of him and whatever but he burns his arm yes um, but the bummer of the ending is just that, like, when Scully returns and he's like, you look a lot better, Mulder says to her, like, she looks better now that she's not in the hospital, and she's still very out of it and very, like, melancholy, and he's like, is this really, like, he's trying to make all these jokes, try and make her feel better, and then she's just not responsive to any of them, and he's like, is this really because I didn't give you a desk? Like, he does not know what's wrong with her yeah, she won't tell him and she still does not tell him she's like you know not everything is about you and it yeah. it makes me sad and angry because i'm like you're not communicating to him like he's not a mind reader he does not know what's going on in your head or that you have cancer potentially or whatever yeah, she hasn't even been like, tested for it you haven't mentioned it to him you haven't said anything and like you did bring up the desk and you brought up like you know this whatever so he gives her an opportunity to open up and share with him, and she doesn't. It's ironic to me because we just talked about in the last episode how she was the most skeptical about Leonard Betts as she's probably ever been in an episode about a case that they've been on where she keeps being like, Mulder, do I really have to respond to that? Yeah. Like, this is ridiculous. There's no way this guy's real. But he's like, you have something I need, and she like just completely believes him yeah I think so has she been tested and now she knows and she's holding that information and she's going to reveal that to us and Mulder later yeah, we... or is she just in her head like because those girls told me what's going on yeah. and now this guy's like almost like confirmed it even though she doesn't believe in him is she too scared to go get tested I would be I, I get that I'd be terrified to go get tested after that guy said that I mean, yeah, but if it's, you know... Has she been tested? I don't know. I'm going to say no. I don't know. I'm 50-50 on that, too. Um, obviously, the sooner you are able to treat an illness, yeah. the better. So, and that goes, you know, especially for something like cancer. There's a lot of cancers that are treatable in the early stages. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with her, but she's very moody. And it's fine. Like, I'm not upset that she's having those feelings but it is always just it's frustrating to watch their relationship sometimes because they work really well on so many levels but you really do see how also mismatched they are in some ways sure and they aren't they're dysfunctional yeah. you know to an extent so it is kind of like as much as you want them to be together you yeah. are like maybe you shouldn't be together yeah. You know, so, yeah. This was a good episode. Well, so, we haven't talked about one big thing here, which is Scully and her dude. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, what their chemistry is like, what she's looking for. So, personally, I feel like, okay, number one, she's just trying to be kind of, like, rebellious because she, you know, she tells that story about how she smoked a cigarette because she was like terrified of getting caught and she likes the thrill. I mm -hmm. think that's what put her towards going into the FBI. She likes being thrilled. She likes doing things that are dangerous. Yeah. Um, so she goes and she hooks up with this guy who's very questionable. Um, and she's even kind of into it when he like grabs her. She's like trying to check his wound. And he, like, grabs her arm really hard and, like, pulls it away. And this is something she's actually into in the moment, which is kind of odd. I would think Scully would be, like, after having everything that's happened to her yeah. happen to her, yeah. you would think she would not like any of that shit at all. Um, but she might just 
like the feeling of being desired because Mulder's not showing that to her. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was, I was telling the kids when we were watching this that while they were at the uh, bar together and he was sitting there uh, with his button-up shirt and his tie and, you know, everything, and he had his hair cut, um, if you were to, like, blur the face out and I was to show it to you, I'd be like, what's this? And you'd be like, Mulder and Scully from the X-Files. But he looks like a stand-in for Mulder. Yeah, he has right? similar features for sure. Yeah. I think she's just, I mean, yeah, she's attracted to the thrill of it and, like, the the bit of the taboo and everything. And she's trying to break up her routine. Like, Scully seems like a very um, routine, organized loose. person. Yeah, so she's really trying to, like, do something different in this. And I think they have pretty good chemistry together. Um, like in another situation, it's not like as good as Mulder and Scully, no. but like, it's not horrible and I can, it's believable enough. Like I can, under, I can believe that she's into him and, um, yeah. I don't buy it as much. I don't, I mean, it's not like perfect chemistry, but I think it's, it's believable. Yeah. I just, I wasn't really buying it as much. Um, uh, it felt a tad forced for me. I just didn't find that connection in when they met. I didn't see anything between them where they have they shared a moment that got her attention towards him. Mm -hmm. um, so it could just be straight up. She's just like, I just want to go out and get laid. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. I just want to get my mind off this. You know, this is the first guy that showed me any attention. Screw it. Kind of looks like Mulder. <laughs> like I'm in it. Like squinty um, eyes. So I get I get by that now. The the real question, did they sleep together? You say yes, I say no. Um, for me, if they were to if they were to have slept together, he wouldn't have slept on the couch. I just don't see any reason for why you'd have sex and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna go sleep on the couch. You don't do that. You'd sleep in the bed with her. Yeah, but she's at his apartment and she's wearing his shirt. I get and that. And usually when, like, girls are wearing shirts, she's like, the guy's shirts. She's not going to sleep in her outfit. Yeah, I don't know. No, she's, she's like, can I, can she I. She has. No, she didn't bring anything. She yeah. didn't intend to go over there. I don't know. Maybe you're she right. She went to his apartment. Maybe you're right. Maybe she he wanted got to spend up the and, night because like, she had a couple too many drinks. Maybe was like, don't sleep next to her. <laughs> and he, like, he mm, moved. He was, she would have been screaming at him the whole time during sex. It's odd to me, though, too, that they don't show them kiss. They show it from behind, and we only really see his head and her arm. It's probably because so many people want, and like, watching the show want wanted Mulder and Scully. Yeah, so they, like, want to, like, really. So maybe you're right. Like, maybe they didn't actually sleep together. I think that's why they showed him on the couch. Yeah. Is to be like, don't worry, everyone. But doesn't Mulder screw the vampire? I don't remember, but I thought so. I thought so, too. I could be wrong. Yeah. He doesn't do anything with Bambi. No. He kind of kisses that girl in the bed who gets on top of him, but that's like the moon. Yeah. Scully almost screws the Amish guy. Yeah. Right, but no one does anything. I don't think... I don't know, yeah. I don't know. And then, of course, the, the chick from uh, from Britain, he kisses her. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they sleep together either. I mean, they have in the past, but I don't think they have in the, in that episode. So I don't know. I don't know if Mulder or Scully have had sex at all since they've met. Yeah. Um, I, I can't really decide. Because Mulder does the same thing. Like, once again, he, he does this thing where he's like, what, Scully, you got a date? Yes. And he then gets he's like, jealous. really? He does the same thing mm -hmm. in the Jersey Devil episode. Yes, he does. And he calls and he's like, well, you got a date? She's like, as a matter of fact, I do. And he's like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, there is some jealousy. And, of course, obviously, on Scully's side, there's a ton of jealousy. Yes. Uh, when, when Bambi gets brought up. Um, she never knows about the vampire. Doesn't no. that happen while she's in a coma? Yes. Isn't that <laughs> one of the coma episodes? I think so, yeah. We were, like, <laughs> joking about that. Well, I Scully's asleep, so. but Mulder's out being sneaky. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with she didn't sleep. I just don't see any reason why after you, after you have sex, you would go sleep on the couch. That just doesn't make any sense. You sleep on the couch because you're trying not to have sex. Okay. Right? 
It's a good idea. You ever slept with someone and then they went and slept on the couch after? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's that. Um, will Scully reveal her cancer to Mulder or find out she has it? And that's just it, too. She also, if she has not gotten tested, what's she going to tell Mulder? I'm a believer right. in your case, and this guy really did convince me I have cancers. Mulder would be like, well, you got to go, you got to go get checked. And if she tells him, then it becomes a reality. And then he's going to force her to get tested. And she's too afraid to get tested. And she's like, she doesn't want anyone to know. But she also is like blaming him for her, you know, place in life right now. Yeah. Because she thought she'd be doing something different. But I think she's just mad because they're not a couple. Yeah, maybe ultimately she's just lonely. <laughs> so... All right, that's that. We'll see in the next episode, which we're not on. We're all caught yep, up again. We're all caught up until, so this until weekend. next week when the girls come home on Saturday. So we're not getting another X Files episode reviewed until at bare minimum Sunday. Yeah, and that's our earliest, and more than likely not. And it's only Tuesday, so it's like a week from now. So that's gonna suck. We're not gonna have any episodes to talk about for a while. But just so you, just so you guys know, in case you're wondering where the hell they are, because we've been uploading pretty frequently with these. But uh, it's going to be at least a week. Yeah. So, anyway. All right, guys. We'll see you in the comments. Bye. Bye.